Hola again, Shalonitos. Bienvenido a Mexico. Still on vacation, but you know, we... is it? Jennifer Lopez will give me no peace. The last time I tried to go on vacation, Jennifer Lopez broke up with Alexander Rodriguez. And what did we say then? What did we say? Who's, who said? Who said that? Mm, okay, they're going to get back together and then she's going to break up with him a few weeks or months down the road, but on her terms. It'll be something like, we're better as friends, blah, 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 because she cannot be wrong. She has to control the narrative. She's such a narcissist. And, oh, Jennifer. ¿Qué estás haciendo, mi amor? ¿Por qué? Is that not exactly what happened? Mm, it's getting tiring being right all the time. Mm, mm, mm. So we're going to break down what's going on behind the scenes here. I can also make another prediction about what's next for Jennifer. You're going to love it and you're going to be like, damn it, she's right again. And more than that, we're going to talk about how this relates to us, right? How do we stay friends or become friends with an ex. And more importantly, I think, because I feel like we've covered this ex thing a lot. What do you do when a guy you're dating is still close with his ex? What does it mean? Well, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why there are only two possible outcomes to that scenario. Before I get into it, just to remind you guys to follow me on Instagram. You can keep up with my Mexican adventures right now. Also, keeping with the theme of exes, I actually did cover this on my Flays channel. Flays is our subscription only, uncensored, ad-free platform where we can like really talk the talk. I talk a lot about like sex tips and stuff like that. And also some story time. So I just did a story time like a week or so ago about where I stand with Max, who is my boyfriend of two years. <sighs> and we are like really, tight now. Like we're, what if you guys commented like platonic power couples? Like, you know, that is kind of how it feels. You know, it feels good to be in a good place, but it's not always easy to get there. So check out that video and I'll tell you like some actual concrete things I did that made absolutely all the difference. But let's get a little TLDR, right? If you want to become friends with your ex, the key is neutrality. The opposite of love isn't hate. It's apathy right? And it's almost impossible for us to expect to go from like super in love, in marada. I just, right? Can you not like understand now Hilaria Balder? I can understand Hilaria Balder because now that I've stepped in this like Latina persona, I'm in Mexico and it's part of me now. I never want to leave. I never want to give this up. I want to do center parts and big ass hoop earrings because the bigger the hoop, the bigger the ho, honey. I want to do this forever. Hilaria, I understand you. You're still a clown, but I do understand a bit more. So can we really say that Alex, who looks like a boiled hot dog, as we have, as we have uh, said many times, and it is irrefutable, that Alex and JLo really can just go from not only dating, but engaged. Their families are very blended. Their children are really close. They have a ton of business ventures together to just like BFF. Well, here's what is being said. Here's what the statement is. When you're as right as I am, you don't need to say I told you so, but I'm a narcissist, so I'm gonna say I told you so. So this is, <laughs> she told the Today Show in a statement. Why the Today Show? We have realized we are better as friends and look forward to remaining so. We will continue to work together and support each other on our shared businesses and projects. We wish the best for each other and each other's children. Now, like I said, this is more than just what it seems. I believe that they probably will be friends, right? But we all know that they broke up because A-Rod basically cheated on her with Madison LaCroix, who is a hard four, and J-Lo's like a 10,000 out of 10. And, you know, J-Lo didn't want to break up immediately because, again, she wanted to control the narrative. So it was like, they've broken up. Well, no, they're back together. They're working through some, th some things. And then she was down in the Dominican Republic visiting him and like, it's just been so hard because he's been down here. Bitch, you live in Miami. The Dominican's a 40 minute flight and you probably have a private plane. Don't give me this shit. But like I said, she was doing that because she needed to distance. She needed some time to let the dust settle. And then she was going to end the relationship on her terms. Why? She's a narcissist. Jennifer Lopez's whole brand is ego and narcissism. And I mean, I love her. I mean, you know I love Jennifer Lopez. I don't know that I'd want to date her. But on the other hand, you know, you guys are like, she seems so impossible to date and so high maintenance. Like, yeah, but that's what you see is what you get. She doesn't position herself as like the queen of low maintenance. And it, like, this is her. So like I said, I think I know what's next. Give it a few weeks. I would say months, but actually I would say give it a few weeks. She's going to have a new guy chasing her. 
her manager, Benny Medina, said like 10 years ago, I will never forget this. He's like, I wish she didn't always have to have a guy pursuing her. Like she has to always basically be adored. And so he's like, I wish she could just be single or basically date someone normal and not so intense that they're like beating down her door. Because on one hand, we, we want a guy to chase us. We need that. That is that even anatomically a woman receives, right? And you know my motto, we never chase, never chase. But JLo takes it to an extreme degree. Just the guy who chases her the hardest gets a, sh a shot with her, like that frog-like backup dancer Casper who we spotted coming out of a gay club. Not a gay club, like a gay sex peep store. Very bizarre. He just like pursued, pursued, pursued. And in her, in her level, people who pursue you that hard are not always like, they can be up to no good, right? Or at the very least, it can just so show a shallowness. And we have to be aware of that in our lives. Like, yes, we wanna be pursued, but we all know guys who come on too strong. It's a red flag. Many, many times it's a red flag of a guy who actually just wants to sleep with you. Boy, challenge. <laughs> He doesn't just want to sleep with me. No, no, no. He keeps like asking me out on dates and like telling me all these things about his family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know why? Because if he tries to knock it down, like get up in there, you can't say, wait, we don't even know each other. And he'll be like, what do you mean we don't know each other? We text all day long. I told you all about my grandmother and the dead parakeet and blah, 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 blah. Right? This is a classic fuckboy tactic. But I digress. Jennifer is going to have a guy come out of the woodwork who's pursuing her hard, but he's gotta be like a, an upper level. He's not gonna be like another Casper Smart. He's gonna be someone who in her mind trumps A-Rod. Maybe, I wonder, I'm thinking like someone international, maybe like a Greek shipping heir, but that's not well known enough. It's gotta be someone people know and they're like, whoa, because her whole thing is I need to be desired. She's a narcissist and she's an aging narcissist. I mean, she's a smoke and she will take any of our man, do not worry about that. But she's over 50, you know, and that fucks with your mind as a woman, no matter how great you look. And so she has to, even more so when she was younger, she has to have guys wanting her, chasing her, pursuing her, desirable, desirable, validation, validation. And again, that's led her into how many engagement? Like five? I don't know. There's been like a lot, right? I wonder if Ben Affleck is going to come back in the picture because then she can spin the narrative of he's loved her this whole time. He was never really in love with Jennifer Garner, his adorable, perfect wife. No, no, no. Or Anna de Armas. Who the fuck could love Anna de Armas? She's such a clout monster. She's cute, but we've talked about her. I could see more rumors about like J-Lo, Benifer. If you guys like, don't remember or weren't alive when Jen and Ben dated, you know, we have like Shamilla and Jaylee and Jelena, like we have those portmanteaus of like two celebrities who are dating. The very first one was Benifer, Ben and Jennifer. That was the first time they had like mushed these, these words together. So they were like the OG. So she knows that their relationship kind of lives in myth, like Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston, right? Brangelina, that's another. And so I could see her kind of planting the seeds there because that would be such a huge news story. Mark my words, I am almost never wrong. But I have been wrong, that's it, about being friends with exes. <sighs> being friends with your ex is not for the faint of heart. Now let me preface all this by saying that it's possible, it's absolutely possible, but first you have to get to that place of neutrality, right? You have to do a lot of work, and I don't mean with him on your relationship, but you have to do work in and in, in of yourself. I talked about this in the Flays video with Max, that like my work to becoming friends with him and being in a good place is not always taking the bait. He would say things and I'm like, okay, like that's ironic. That's fucking rich of you to say something like that. Or it's like, there was just something that I could say to like needle and I'm like, no. If I'm saying the past is the past, we can be friends, we can be in this good place, that means you actually have to leave it there. And it sucks because even if, even though I would be right to say this thing, I would be right and it would be like clever and punchy. Hey, am I after peace or victory? In that moment, I could be victorious. But what I was overall after was peace, a harmonious platonic friendship with someone who I value in so many ways, who is not right for me as a partner, but who is right for me as like a 
best friend. And with my best friends, if we fight and, and move on from something, you, ha- you let it go and it's hard. You might not be at that place and that's okay, but you have to recognize that. Whatever it is you're capable of, whatever it is you want, it's fine. It's fine. It's not fine to pretend otherwise, right? Think about this in terms of physical health, something fitness related. We talked about this kind of in like the last video with uh, Colton Underwood, that fucking bitch. Fuck, I hate that guy. Um, you have to know your physical limits, right? If you cannot run a marathon, don't sign up for a marathon. Don't get 13 miles in and be like, fuck, now I, I can't get out of here, right? You have to understand your limits. Whatever they are is okay and they could change over time, but look at where you are now. Can you have a conversation with your ex? What if that conversation was, he met someone, he's on Tinder, he had a one night stand. Would you just be like, would it just trigger you? Then maybe you're not there and that's all right. The dust really needs to settle. And in order to settle that dust, it's gotta be cold turkey. It's gotta be cold turkey. And it's hard because it feels like death. It feels like death. One of my best friends, she lost one of her parents when she was young. I lost my father. And we always talk about how when our relationships end, if we get ghosted, if we, you know, if, if we break up, we take it harder than a lot of people because our floor and ceiling for grief is so much bigger than people who maybe haven't lost somebody, you know? And so for us, the ending of a relationship kicks up against that feeling of death. It's mortality. I might never see them again. I might never hear their voice again. I might never hold them again. And we know what that feels like, right? And most of us do. Unfortunately, we've lost grandparents, pets even. I mean, my God, I grieve my dog more than my father for sure. She was there for me more. But that's why it's so hard to let go because we don't know if we're ever going to see them again. Look, I think we all know by now that exes are like, you know, herpes in people form. They come back. They come back. Just when you're like, oh, I'm never seeing this again. They're like, hello. We are so connected in this world. If you really want to find someone, talk to them, make amends, you can. Don't worry. No one's getting launched into space. Okay. I guarantee none of our exes are smart enough to work for SpaceX. If they were that smart, they'd be smart enough to hang on to us. So it's possible to get to this place of neutrality, but a lot has to settle. You have to be committed to yourself to not take the bait to twist the knife. But I want to talk about what if you're the next person to date A-Rod or J-Lo, A-Rod, hot dog, hot dog face. And let's say that they're a bit more normal and they're not too complete narcissists and they do have a, a friendship and they're still in each other's lives. I think as we get older, we meet people who do have their ex in their life. I mean, I, in Montana, I am one of the rare birds that does not have kids. Like almost everyone has kids. That's like why I date younger guys. I mean, you know, there's a million reasons, but like, I don't want to be a stepmom now. I mean, I, I could see me being a stepmom, but like, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. And I don't want to hear about, I just, so I go like younger, but I dated, I did date this guy before I met Vince and like coupled up with him. And he was like way too freshly divorced. Like he was clearly not over it. And he had two kids with his ex-wife and she was like a third party in our relationship. She was like a ghost that was just sitting with us and haunting our dates all the time. He brought her up. We could be talking about Justin Timberlake, woodworking, elk, raccoon. It wouldn't matter. A lot of animal conversations. He brought her up. Oh, my ex liked that song. Oh, my ex told me this. And I was like, I don't want to hear about your ex ever again, ever again. And one of my friends is like, Shallon, you can't say that. Like he's got kids with this woman. I'm like, I get that. I'm not saying he can't talk to her. I'm saying that there's no reason to be bringing her up if we're talking about Justin Timberlake. There's no reason. I'm not asking about the kids. I'm not asking about her. I'm not bringing up mine. And I even said, I was like, do you know my ex-husband's name? Do you know the name of any of my ex-boyfriends? Do you know anything about them? Nope. You know why? Because for me, the past is the past. I have worked through beep, boop, boop, all of those relationships. I am not importing them in here. I don't feel the need to talk about them. That's not where you're at. We got to part ways. He just wasn't there. But what if you're dating a guy who says he's, I am over her. I am over her. Hmm. 
And yet, maybe he's always running off to help her. Oh, but honey, she blew a tire. Sorry, I kicked my own stand over. I have to go help her change a tire. She needs me to print something out. Her computer broke. Her grandmother's in the hospital. Ba, ba, ba. There will be an endless list of reasons why a manipulative ex-girlfriend needs your man right in front of her. Okay? And none of it is an accident. Hear this. None of what that girl is doing is an accident. She is not your friend. And no matter what she says to you about, I know I want Jeff to be happy. I don't want to come between you two. Well, you are, and of course you do. And you also need to know something else. His behavior is not accidental either. It is not accidental either. I am like, as we speak, like right before I film this, I was texting with my best friend. She's in this exact position. She's been dating a guy and he's got this ex-wife who's just a friend, but is an interloper in their relationship. Now it's like a three way relationship. Like the ex is texting my friend and I don't want to come between you. And I'm like, this has gone so far left. Like this is insane, babe. And she's like, I was talking to my therapist about it. My friend was talking to her therapist. And the therapist was like, I hear this shit all the time. Like my husband's not over his ex. She's still talking, whatever. It goes one of two ways. Either he cuts contact with the ex completely or you guys break up. That's it. It's not, well, and then we're all like really super harmonious. Nope. And look, 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 look. I know some people have kids. They genuinely need to stay in touch. That does not mean there is a lack of boundaries. With Kourtney Kardashian and Scott Disick, there's a lack of boundaries. With the dude I dated and his ex-wife, lack of boundaries. My best friend in this... No boundaries at all, right? I understand that it's not possible always to like never talk to the mother of your children again. But if they don't have any kids, they don't share property, a dog, whatever. Done. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, Shallon. Your ex is literally at your house right now. And you, you think you can tell a guy not to talk to his ex. You're clearly still like friends with Max. Yes, first of all, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> but also, I understand, and I've said this to him, we've said this to each other, like when, if and when we meet someone who we're really in love with, we will understand that our relationship will be severely downgraded, if not kind of ended altogether. Like we get that because I do want him to be happy. I do want him to find true love. And it's, it's going to break my heart when it's, you know, not with me. When he has, mm, uh, when he has kids that aren't mine, like that's, that's going to be really tough. That's going to be tough. And it will be tough for him, vice versa. I and mean, we've talked about it. That doesn't mean that our relationship should continue, you know, like, but it's, it's a reality. And it's, it's a painful reality of getting older and having people in your rear view that you love that you don't want to just completely cut out of your life and you're trying to navigate having it all. And I'm not saying it's impossible. It isn't. You know, if people can have their exes in a neutral platonic category where everyone's on the same page, okay. But when you get that feeling of, if she needs something printed, that bitch can run her ass down to Office Depot like I do. I'm pretty sure she can just call the geek squad to fix her modem. She can hire movers. She should call someone else if her grandmother broke a hip, right? If there seems to be a lack of neutrality, this is what you do. Because let me guess. Let me, let me tell you what you've already done. You brought this up. You brought this up. I don't like this. I don't trust her. Ba, ba, ba. And you know what that's done? Rah! He's entrenched deeper into his position. People don't like to be ordered around, right? They also don't like to feel like they're being cuckolded, like they're an idiot being bamboozled by a manipulative woman, like this ex. She's taking advantage of you, blah, blah, blah. They don't want to feel that. Who's like, that's probably true because I'm real dumb. Like, we don't want to think that about ourselves. So we're going to, then we're going to kick into that confirmation bias where it's like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you why you're wrong. I'm going to justify what I'm doing and I'm going to entrench in my position even further. So you probably said your piece, right? And you're starting to nag. You're starting to get sick of hearing yourself say this. This is what you do. You say nothing now. 
I'm, I'm going over to Kristen's house to, to print this thing for her. Okay. Notice how I said that? Okay. I wasn't like, okay, have fun. Yay. Dinner's at seven. Mm -mm. I am a big believer in the smile that doesn't quite touch your eyes. There's a big difference between and one is sinister. And that's the point. That's the point. If you have a man who's constantly running off to his ex, talking to her, whatever, he clearly isn't afraid of you. Not like a man should be in mortal danger of fear of his life. You know, I keep five guns in my house. He shouldn't feel like that. But he should feel afraid that your pretty ass will walk up and leave. I will never forget this tweet that I read. It was some rapper the tweet, I can't remember. But he's like, fellas, beware when your girlfriend stops arguing with you. It means she doesn't even care enough to fight anymore. And silence is deadly. I'm like, oh, yes, silence is deadly. So that's a weapon. Let's employ it. Let's employ it. Because this bitch on the other side, this ex, oh, she's employing plenty of weapons. I need help. Don't you remember when you cheated on me? The least you can do is come and fix my Mac. She's pulling out all the stops. He's also running plenty of games on you. You're being crazy. There's nothing going on. The gaslighting, the manipulation, the absolute whatever-ishness about your feelings. And who is the only person here pretty, I'm being truthful and open and honest. How's it, how's it going? Where's it getting you? Now here's a, here's a little aside. I'm gonna tell you how to fix this, right? I'm gonna tell you how to be a little bit manipulative for the good of everyone because it is good for everyone. This other ugly, dumpy bitch with her fucking cankles, she needs to move on and get a life of her own, right? Your boyfriend needs to pick, he needs to be all in or all out, right? He can't, no one can look ahead and behind at the same time. You obviously need a man who is plugged into you or you need to see the writing on the wall. But we also have to ask ourselves, is this worth it? Is this worth the effort? Do we want to be someone's emotional parole officer? I don't. What do I always say? I don't fight for men, I fight for money and mozzarella sticks, baby. That's it. If a guy wants to see an ex, fine, go. Don't come back. Fine. No, I can fix my own computer. I can fix my own computer. I've got a lot of machines in this house that can do what you do, my man. Bye. But let's say you want to stick it out. Let's say, like, no, 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 this is my territory and I know that he loves me. And aside from this bitch, like, worming around, worming around, he, we would be fine if he genuinely doesn't have feelings for her, but she's being manipulative with him, right? And so we got to get her out of here. Okay, this is what you do. Okay, I'll see you later. That slightly sinister smile. And you don't bring up your concerns one more time, not one. Because then he's going to be like, why isn't she nagging me? Why does she seem so okay with this? What's going on? Is she just over it? Is she like fine with it? She's probably fine with it. Nah, it doesn't seem like her. Is she over me? Oh my God. Is she planning to blow up my ex's car? Something's going on. And you know what's gonna happen next? He's gonna come to you and start communicating. He's gonna come to you. Hey, how are, how are you feeling about Kristen, I know, that, I know that Kristen called the other day and like I went over there and like I really shouldn't have done that. You can do whatever you want. Has there ever been anything more frightening for a man here? Do whatever you want, it's fine. Well, I just, I wanna, I wanna like make sure, I just wanna see how you're feeling. I told you exactly how I feel, many times. Why don't you tell me? I wanna hear, tell me what you heard me saying about your relationship with Kristen. Tell me. Um, uh, that you, didn't like her and you thought she's taking advantage of me and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. I said that. I also said how this all made me feel. This is a crucial part of the script. Feel, right? Because now that he's listening, because he's afraid, now you're going with the big guns. I feel when you leave dinner to go help her with something, when you can't hang out on a Friday night because there's something going on with her, I feel ignored and unloved. And I also feel, because I have brought this up to you, one, two, three, four, five, six, eleven thousand 11,000 times, and you're like, mm, I feel like my feelings don't matter. That only one of us in this relationship cares how I feel, and that's me. 
So I kind of have to connect the dots like, why would I stay in this relationship? Why am I, why am I here? Why don't you answer that question for me, Jeff? Why am I here? Sell me on it. Come to daddy. Twist this around. He wants to fight for someone. He's afraid of someone. Make it you. Because then you have to listen. Then you get to listen to what he says. And if he defaults to this gaslighting, oh my fucking God, not this again. I told you there's nothing going on. I told you she just doesn't know how to work her computer. I have to help her sometimes. I want you to picture everything he's saying as being written on a wall. Like sometimes, you know, we always have the phrase, the writing's on the wall. What if the writing was like literally on the wall? Like if you, if you came home and you're like, I am still in love with my ex. I do not care. I do not care about your feelings and I will continue to see both of you and you can get mad, but I am not going to change. Did you spray paint that on the fucking wall, Jeff? We're going to lose our deposit. Why did you do? You spray paint that on the wall. All right. If it was literally on a wall, you would be like, Okay, so when he's saying things, you sometimes even like pull up your, your voice notes and record it so you can like go back and listen to it later. It's hard for us to process things in the moment. I get very emotional, I get very hot headed. And so sometimes I like to like communicate a lot over text so I can reread, I can refine, I can edit, you know? And that's hard to do in real life. But go back and picture what he said on a wall. And is it very clear? Because my friend who's going through this with this dude, she's like, I'm just so confused. I was like, I don't think you are confused. I think you're heartbroken because you're reading the writing on the wall. And it's at this point where do I just accept that my boyfriend is never going to stop talking to his ex? He, he says I'm coercing him. I'm being mean. I, I, he's indulging me by, by not talking to her all the time and not like ditching her on him ditching me on important holidays and stuff, right? Like his position has been extremely linear, extremely linear. There has been almost no variation in message whatsoever. The only variation in message is your interpretation of it, is how you have wanted to see it. So the confusion is coming from you. It's coming from you like you're the one making it confusing because you're not willing to read the writing on the wall, right? His behavior, his messaging, his everything has been extremely clear, extremely clear, nothing opaque there at all. And a lot of times what we do is like we Guantanamo someone, we Guantanamo Bay a guy. We ask a question again and again and again until we get the answer we want, right? Until it's like, fine, no, I won't talk to her anymore. Jesus Christ, leave me alone, right? And then we're like, but he's still talking to her. He said he wouldn't. No, he said under torture that he wouldn't. He said under duress. This was a false confession. The other 11 times you asked him, it was, you're, being, you're making too much out of this. You're being crazy. We're just friends. We're just friends. She's in my life. Get over it. Deal with it. And the 12th time is like, ugh, fine. I'll take a friend break from her. Jesus. That's not what the truth is. That's the outlier data point. The bulk of the data says one thing and one thing only. Literally the thing he's saying. It's saying the thing that he's saying. This is not a highly, how do we interpret this? You interpret it by literally just looking at what he's saying to you. And it's painful. You know what I always say, baby girls? I get questions from you guys. I get all this stuff. I look at my own life. I look at my friends' lives. It is never, it almost never comes down to, I didn't know what I thought it was going to be different. It comes down to, I knew he was very clear and I just didn't want to accept it. The writing was on the wall. I did not want to read it to your own doom, to your own doom. Because then when we don't read the writing, when we don't listen to what people are doing, when we don't observe and vlog and accept their behaviors, not only, I mean, eventually it ends. Like I, like my friend therapist said, you either, he either cuts contact, which he said multiple times, I'm not going to do. Or you two break up, right? And he just moves on to someone who is more accepting. Okay, whatever. I'm a beta bitch. I don't watch Alan Lester's channel. Fine, that's fine. He can run off to his ex-girlfriends. I have no real spine. I need a man. When that happens, you're not only mad, you're heartbroken, you're confused. I've wasted all this time. You know who you're mad at? You're mad at yourself. 
match yourself because you knew you knew the psyche was trying to tell you your body mechanisms were trying to tell you, you were anxious you couldn't sleep your tummy hurt that's because you were under this extreme cognitive dis dissonance cognitive dissonance is the reality does not match my desires right i want a faithful man who is plugged into only me that is not what's going on so i'm going to spin these i'm going to do these mental gymnastics to try to twist this situation to something that is going to work knowing full well I, down deep it is not and then you're angry at yourself and that is when we get stuck that's when we get stuck on an x when it just takes forever to get over something we can't let it go because we're not forgiving ourselves we're so mad at ourselves we're not learning because the learning now is not it's beyond just hey like i've learned that if a guy says like i'm not going to leave my ex like I, or stop talking to my ex like that's what it is and i'm going to leave the learning is now involving i it's all these i statements i was telling myself this fear story I was debasing myself. I was dialing down my needs. I was being undignified. I was feeling desperate. Those aren't fun things to say to yourself and admit. And so we don't, we don't do that. We instead say, I have to have that bitch back. I gotta have that guy back. Cause then all the shitty things I did to debase myself and humiliate myself to keep him, well, then it's worth it because I got him. And so those bad things, those bad behaviors weren't part, I mean, they weren't just like some shitty, uh, humiliating story. They were part of a larger story with a happy ending and he's the happy ending. No, he's not. No, he's not. You know what he is? He's the oldest story in the book. He's the oldest story in the book. He's a dick who likes having two girlfriends. That's it. Oldest story in the book. Oh, it's so complicated. It's complicated. Not complicated at all. He's a man who wants two women fighting over him. And if you think that his behavior is not purposeful, baby girl, just because he doesn't have like a whiteboard in his basement, like phase the second, make challenge crazy. That it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It is still purposeful in that you have communicated when you do X, Y, and Z, it hurts me. When you run off with her, it hurts me and feels unloved. And he's like, so therefore it is purposeful. He knows the emotional consequence. You've told him he doesn't care. That is what it is. Why do you want to be in a relationship with someone that fundamentally doesn't give a shit if you're in pain? You know who doesn't care that I'm in pain? Strangers and enemies. Which, is, which category is this guy going to fall into? Is he a stranger or is he an enemy? Because he's not a friend. He's not a lover. He's not a faithful person. People have to be in categories, right? And if we pretend, again, it's like, no, 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 he's my faithful. He loves me, but he doesn't care that I'm in pain. Cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance. Those two things do not walk hand in hand. They're diametrically opposed. So it's time to read the writing on the wall. It's time to do better for yourself. And it's time to shred Alexander Rodriguez in the comment section. Tell me who JLo should date next. Um, and we're, I am going to be doing a video on Khloe Kardashian's photo scandal. Just give me a little time. I'm trying to enjoy my vacay just a bit. But we're going to be back with that. We might even do some more videos on this JLo topic because there really are so many. And like I said, if you want a little bit more info about my own situation with my ex, head on over to Flay's. And we'll see you later, Shalligators. Adios, mi amores.